What's up, folks? This is Kenny down here in Arkansas. Uh, I'm a conservative activist. I've been filming a lot of events here. Uh, kind of doing a recap on events that are coming up and kind of and then chat a little bit about an issue that's kind of irked me. Uh, first of all, just let me just kind of read off these list of events because there's a whole bunch of them happening this week. Uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, August the 1st. Jeff Sessions is supposed to be at the Lake Hamilton School at about 3 p.m. to talk about security. Uh, I actually found this on Facebook in another way. The leftist group, there's a lady that's running for Congress named Hayden Shamel, and she's running against uh, the conservative Bruce Westerman, and she's going to try to protest Jeff Sessions there. And they're supposed to have some kind of powwow at her headquarters, and they're supposed to march there from about 2 till 3 uh, Jeff Sessions was supposed to, I believe, was also supposed to have some kind of press conference at a office in Little Rock, but I believe that's just only restricted to the press. And I'm not sure. I heard there might be a protest on there, but I saw one person that was kind of interested in that, so uh, there may not be much happening there. But at, I know there's a bunch, there's a group called the Freedom Crew that protests down there in Hot Springs. I've already notified James DeBrock down there about this, uh, but if you want to kind of wander around, see what's going on. Uh, that's kind of an event you can visit tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Also tomorrow, s people living in the People's Republic of Little Rock, you have a chance to meet some of the mayoral candidates. They're supposed to have some kind of one-hour debate happening. It's tomorrow at 6.30 at St. Mark Baptist Church at 52722 West 12th Street, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, of course, I... I I literally just found out about this while I was looking at other events for Thursday. Um, but I thought I'd throw that in there. Of course, by the time most people see this, it'll probably be too late. But, or too late to plan. But, um, the media has done a very good job of getting people not to care about local politics. Uh, everything is all about Trump, this, that, and the other. And tr tariffs, and Stormy Daniels, and Russians, and stuff that people can't do anything about. Uh, except for comment on Facebook, so I'm trying to let people know about that. But that's tomorrow. Thursday, August the 2nd. Oh my goodness. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other stuff. Thursday at noon at the Faulkner County Tea Party is going to have their meeting at Larry's Pizza. They actually have a meeting every Thursday there. Um, but this particular Thursday, Paul Harrell of Conduit News is going to be on there. He has a radio show from 6 to 8 a.m. Uh, as you might guess, I've done some video work for him. And he's going to be there to talk about uh, issues that affect all of us. Also Thursday, um, at 6.30, the Arkansas Republican uh, Committee for Saline County is going to have their meeting. Their guest is going to be Alan Clark, and he's going to talk about term limits. Now, previous posts on Facebook have seemed to indicate that uh, Senator Clark, who's done a very good job on several issues, seems to be opposed to term limits. Uh, just to clarify, uh, on the November ballot, there should be the uh, restoring term limits. Uh, term limits are first enacted in 1992, I believe, uh, before the, um, members could serve in the state legislature as long as they wanted to. Afterwards, there were uh, times that they could serve in there. I believe it was six years in the House and, I believe, eight years in the Senate. And... There was an attempt to push for uh, on the ballot uh, term limits, I believe, in the mid-90s, and it was defeated overwhelmingly. So the Senator John Woods and Warwick Sabin um, got together. Republican Senator John Woods, who is now, I believe, going to jail for several years for corruption and involving tax money, and Warwick Sabin, who is one of these candidates running for mayor, the last time I checked, is uh, put, snuck in, extended terms under issue three which was a, a so-called ethics reform bill which really did not do anything regarding ethics on several issues um, it was on page 16 of the ethics reform bill most people did not read that far and so it nearly passed it extended the time that state legislature could serve in office um, several activists got together and forum that that fought for term limits before to restore term limits i was part of that ballot initiative and they, we gathered signatures from events for almost not quite two years, and we managed to gather 135,000 signatures. 
Uh, the Secretary of State's verifying them right now. We need only 85, uh, about 85,000 of them to be legitimate. We should be able to be get enough to be on the ballot. Uh, there are other ballot initiatives. There's a casino one, which is uh, gather ex which got an extension to gather signatures, and then there's a minimum wage one, which I'm not sure yet has been certified what its status is. I'm kind of hoping it fails. Minimum wage, by the way, is a scam. It's, it doesn't help poor people. It just gets rid of entry-level jobs and forces some people to go out of business. And uh, really what they need is tax cuts. And, of course, we need a cuts in government spending in order to afford that. Anyway, um, that meeting's happening tomorrow at the Saline County Republican Party headquarters. Uh, it's basically on Main Street. Um, you'd have to look that up online. I don't have the address for it. If you look up Saline County Republican Party headquarters, it should be there. 6.30, Allen College is supposed to speak. Also, they're supposed to have candidate training there. So if you're interested in running for office, maybe wanting to help in an office, how do campaigns work, um, you're supposed to have a guy that's supposed to do training there after that. Also on Thursday, the state of Tennessee is having their primary. I honestly don't know what conservatives or rhinos or Democrats or socialist Democrats or maybe even decent Democrats are running in that primary. I do not remember if they have an open primary where someone who is a Republican can go vote as a Democrat and vice versa. But their primary is this Thursday, August 2nd. That's an unusual day. Usually they're held on Tuesdays. Um, and of course these primaries, I know my primary had a very low turnout and it was really sad because a lot of conservatives lost a chance to be able to you know help drain the swamp on a local level which is much more important than, than you know drain the swamp on a national level you, know, you can't take on the Rothschilds if you can't take on your local chamber of commerce uh, both of them are enemies both of them want to increase government power uh, but you, you got to deal with the you know remove the beam from thy own eye as the good book says uh, also on Thursday, a, a group called the Green County Right to Life, which meets up in Paragold, is going to meet at the Green County uh, Community Center. I believe it's around at 6 as well, or 6 or 6.30. You know, just show up there at 6 if you're interested in pro-life issues. Uh, Green County, I had to look up where this was. This is over by the, uh, Paragold is basically over by the boot of Missouri. <laughs> The boot of Missouri is kicking it like a soccer ball. It's over there in Arkansas, up in there in northwest Arkansas. Um, events that are kind of uh, uh, occurring on a um, national level is the budget crisis. Of course, uh, the media allowed uh, Republicans and Democrats in the House uh, National Budget Committee to get away with piling in everything from funding to abortion to funding of ethanol and all that. Instead of separating those out, they pile them into one thing, and so congressmen are, are forced to uh, choose between funding Planned Parenthood and uh, spending on the military and funding a few government items that are needed, you know, funding for sec or border security and funding for ethanol. And instead of separating it, they, they allow, they deliberately allow Congress to pile it into one thing, and now there's a big budget crisis. And so the budget's being debated right now. Uh, the most important thing right now, since that's already been done, uh, it was done and passed in June, is to urge your congressman to support funding of the wall. I mean, securing the border is pretty much the main reason to even have a government, a federal government. I mean, that's, uh, and there's not much else to reason to even have one uh, other than that. I and mean, if they're not going to do that, then just dissolve it. And. Uh, you know, Washington, D.C. has neglected its primary duty. Uh, it's, it, the, the Constitution authorizes Congress to secure the border. Uh -huh. As I said before, it's pretty much the only reason to even have a federal government. I mean, honestly, if Washington, D.C. were announced, you know, the federal government's too corrupt and allow the states to do it, I believe the states, and, you know, here, here's a few million dollars. Don't don't give it to Washington, D.C. Just build the wall yourself. I believe, I believe Texas would do it. I believe several other states would do it as well. Um, you cannot have a, a nation without borders. You can't have a free economic society. You can't have a, a, a constitutional republic without borders. Um, and I hate to break this, but Milton Friedman once said, you can have a nation without borders, or you can have a nation without welfare state, but you can't have both. Well, um, I hate to break it to you, but Milton Friedman was wrong. Because there's no, there's no such country that has existed that does that. Um, a lot of the nations that uh, are examples of free e economic freedom like Hong Kong and Singapore they have very strict immigration policies uh, both to enter the, con enter the country and to maintain a living there. 
So, tell Congress, my congressman French Hill, uh, many congressmen are up for office. Uh, Bruce Westerman, as I mentioned before, there's four congressmen here in Arkansas. Of course, there's two senators. Uh, call them, urge them to support funding for the wall, as well as funding for border security. Um, we, need border, we need border security, of course, in our ports. We need border security in the northern border, where some of the illegals are now going to Canada to sneak in. Um, we need to crack down on these cowardly uh, crony capitalist businesses like Tyson Foods and Cargill and Swift Cove that have been caught red-handed hiring illegals. Uh, we need to destroy the myth that the, these handful of crony capitalists that need illegals, that you, they're proven wrong. If you type in Alabama self-deportation laws, and I think it's the Warren chicken plant, where within hours of those uh, laws being enacted and enforced, uh, there was lines of people surrounding the area, these factories that supposedly need illegals. And most of them are often minorities, blacks, often poor whites, and then a few Hispanics that are here, um, you know, citizens and often legal immigrants that are often kicked out because uh, these company quote-unquote needed illegals. Uh, so that's kind of a that kind of a list of events that are going on. Of course, uh, the heroes down in Sharon, Mexico, there's a little city called the C-H-E-R-E-A-N, C-H-E-R-A-N, Mexico, and you, you're you deliberately not being hurt, talked about because it is a city that has figured out the problem to illegal immigration, and that is the people in Central and South America need to fight against their government, corrupt governments. Um, they, they, picked, they somehow got firearms, despite Mexican anti-gun laws, and they kicked out the corrupt politicians and the drug cartels, and they basically set up their own form of government. And so far, over the course of several years, I think they had one murder, uh, and it may have been a bunch of uh, gangbangers trying to kill some one of the uh, one of their uh, basically malicious uh, that they have there. They, they have malicious uh, patrol there. They all started with deforestation. Uh, they, there were a bunch of corrupt loggers, and they were cutting down the forest and. And, of course, they were in bed with the cartels and the politicians. And it, it basically, I don't know how these people managed to get their hands on guns, but they got them. If you, if you type in sure in Mexico, you need to uh, you share with others, you'll see some guy. I think he's got a Tech 9. Some of them got those those AR-15s uh, that were told are so evil. Uh, I don't know if they have any straws there or not, but um, so, no, that's, that's supposed to be the dangerous thing. But anyway, sure in Mexico is still fighting strong. Uh, and they, they are the solution to illegal immigration. When someone says, what would you do if you, if you, if would you bring your people here and, and try to guilt trip you into all these separated families? Is No, 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 that's not the solution. Uh, you want to, uh, the families of shared Mexico have found a way to keep themselves from being separated but from corruption. That is, is to take up arms. They're, they're at the point now where yeah, it, it's so corrupt in these Central and South American countries that they need to get guns and kick the politicians and the drug cartels out. Um,